Fine. Welcome back for the second session. Say thank you. Basic courtesies. Okay, good. <laughs> Customer care. Right. So we had been talking about the mantra background, and then in addition to that, we have done how many mantras up to now? One. Fifteen more to go. So let's get on to the second mantra is either we serve someone outside or serve everyone inside. Now, again to make happy, it comes under happy category. Mantra two is either we serve someone outside, we call them external customers, and or serve everyone inside. If you are not serving somebody outside, please realize the fact that you are serving somebody inside. Because the people who are serving each other inside are going to help to finally serve people who are outside. Right. Now let's start looking at it. Who are those inside? Now you have this page. Kindly get onto this page, please. Mantra two. Either we serve someone outside or serve everyone inside. Right. Who are our external customers, outsiders? Who are they? What's your operation, sir? You said you're from? Digital Commerce. Digital Commerce Lanka. Who are your external customers? You have external customers? You offer services? Who are they? I don't want the names, but who are they? Who is getting programs written by you all? Is it? Do they get that? Purchase goods, Purchase goods from you. What type of goods you sell? Household items, electronics. Right, fine. They are your customers. Right. Love beverages. Your customers are? Anybody who, oh, anybody who is interested in your business. Right. You come from, sir, you said open arc. So who are your customers? Banking and finance sectors to whom that you are offering your services. They are our external customers. Right. Look at them quite broadly because I have to do this program in a manner where because you get a decent amount of representation from front office and middle office and then you get even representation from GMs as well. Look at this. This is Valor Supermarket which I happen to see in Japan. And I walked into this supermarket and then I saw this buggy and this little baby and the lady. Here is the question. Who is influencing the mother to go to this valet supermarket? Who? The child. Every time when she's passing by the valley supermarket, I'm sure what happened? Child must be telling, Mama, Mama, hungry, hungry, thirsty, take me there, take me there, take me there. Isn't it? Is she truly coming there because she's feeling hungry? No. Why does she come there? She wants to have this buggy experience. A ride in that. Why? In Japan, houses are small. You cannot afford to have these kind of buggies at home. So if at all children want to have a buggy ride, they have to take, parents have to take these children to a place, playhouse, maybe during the weekend. So weekdays, if they want this experience, supermarket is the only place where they could have that. Right. Question. Does the mother like to bring this child over there? Does the mother like to bring this child over there? No? Of course. Why? When you put the child into the buggy, because initially I happened to spot them inside the supermarket, then that time child was inside. I never took a photograph thinking that it's not ethical to do that. Then I got permission from her and then did so. So she was inside. Now, a bigger space is given to the child where the mother is left out with a little space to keep the basket. Mother also would like to bring this child. Why? When the child is inside the buggy, <laughs> mother could freely keep on filling her basket. Otherwise, by force, if you bring the child, child would say, oh, mama, what is the meaning of this? Mama, I have enough. Mama, my legs are aching. Mama, take me. Enough, enough. I'm going to cry. Isn't it? Okay. When a husband, wife, child, when they walked into a bank, or husband and wife first, husband is going to place a deposit. 
wife is coming along with him. Is the wife a customer? Of course. Whose question should you ask, answer first? The lady's questions or the gentleman's questions? <laughs> yeah. Deposit is going to be in his account, his name. And lady just brought him in. Brought her in. Now tell me, when you ask, answer a question, whose question should you answer first? The lady. Because you find the gentleman would be, would be interested about what? <laughs> figures. All something to do with figures, logical things. Whereas the lady is emotional. For husband, they are figures. For ladies, it's colors, isn't it? <laughs> That's what happened. So her emotional question should be given topest priority than the husband. If you even give through body language, if you say, Madam, you better shut up and wait, and then I will finish with your husband, and then thereafter, if there is time, I will listen to your questions. You need not tell that in words. You just indicate through your body language. That's good enough. He would take a piece of flesh from the husband's hand and say, let's go home. What deposits here if you want to see the marriage ring? <laughs> Now, your body language becomes important. Whenever you are extending a service, dear friends, realize, whenever you communicate something, 7% words, 38% how you say so, and then 55% is your body language. Whenever you are communicating something, 7% what you say, 38% how you say so, and 55% is your body language. Right. So, wife is also a customer. First of all, give the priority to her. Excuse me, sir. Yes, madam. What is it that you want to clarify? Two. Husband, wife, child, they all three coming. <laughs> Whom should you greet and treat first? The child. Why? <laughs> what do children need when they go to an unknown territory? They need attention. That's why they scream, they run around, they do all kinds of things to get that attention. When my elder son was small, the Aramex Korea company was down Flower Road. One day, I had a letter to be handed over to Aramex Korea company. So I went to the school at 12.30. When the school was over, I picked him up and I told him, Puta, there is a letter to be handed over to a nearby Korea company and then just we'll walk there and then after that we'll go home. Is he coming behind me willingly or unwillingly? Unwillingly. What does a child need after school? Get home as soon as possible eat, play, and then sleep. So I have disturbed his routine. And how is he coming behind me? What is the meaning of this? Should I put that and I have to go home to sleep. Now when we walked into that office, the girl who was seated behind the counter, first he looked at the child and said, hi darling, good afternoon, after school. Don't ask me how he got this energy. He was given the hand on the counter and he let me do the transaction. So I had handed over the letter, I got the invoice, made the payment, I got the receipt, transaction was over, now I want to go. He's not willing to come. So I said, yeah, let's go. go. Then what happened? <laughs> this girl said, hey, see you, darling. Is it on TV? Right. <laughs> now, did this girl do a good thing? Yes or no? Louder, quickly. Yes. How was she in a position to do that? Two weeks prior to that, she came for a training program of mine. Okay, right. <laughs> now, next day, when I went to pick him up, he's asking me, Tati, today you don't have any letters to be posted there. Well, let's just go there and go. Now, there is a thing, dear friends, in marketing we learn. Catch them young. Catch them young. Catch them young. Now, look at that child who is going to that supermarket. They say age three and a half to 16 is the time you develop certain loyalties towards organizations because whatever you see, whatever you experience, it's going to stay there in your mind for a longer period of time. So that mother likes to go to that supermarket, child loves to go, and in addition to that, when this child grows, and when she has a buying power, obviously that supermarket is going to be her choice. Like. Likewise, it's a catch them young. 